Hello and welcome to Wondershare Filmora 10.5 course. This course can be taken by any student who is interested in Filmora X or Filmora 10. 10.5 is generally a new update to version 10 with some more features. Downloading and installing Wondershare Filmora is very easy. Just go to Google, type download Filmora. Make sure that the website is genuine like this. Or just type filmora.wondershare.com in the browser and hit enter. This page opens up. Click on try it for free. By the way, free version will put a watermark on your exported videos, so you'll have to purchase it. Otherwise, for practicing and testing, you can use it for free. So by clicking on this button, you will be taken to the download page. Once downloaded, open the installer and click next to install it. And the rest of it is self-explanatory. Now before we jump into Filmora and start working, let's first understand the frame rates or FPS and the video resolutions. I will not get into more details for each resolution type, but I'll explain the common resolutions with which you will be working in Filmora. I'm going to talk about HD and Ultra HD resolution. For HD video, there are two resolutions. One is 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And the second is 1080p or Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. For Ultra HD, there are two common resolutions. One is 1440p or 2K, which is 2560 by 1440. Second is 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. All these resolutions have aspect ratio. For example, the ones I have explained all have an aspect ratio of 16 into 9. And 16 into 9 aspect ratio is also called landscape mode, which is common on YouTube. For portrait mode, this can be changed as 9 into 16 so that the video can be used on mobile devices such as Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and WhatsApp status, etc. And there are some more aspect ratios which apply to social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I'll explain those at a later stage when we will create social content in Filmora in upcoming lessons. So for now, you will be working with these resolutions. Now let's talk about the frame rates. Frame rate is the number of pictures or frames which are displayed in one second of a video. The greater the amount of frames, the smoother the video will be. Normally, for cinematic videos, a frame rate of 24 FPS is used in any given resolution. It is also common on YouTube and social media. But you can also shoot videos in 25 FPS, 30 FPS, 50 FPS, and 60 FPS. There are also some higher frame rates such as 120 FPS, 240 FPS, and so on which are only used when you want to slow down a video in the post-production or editing process. In this video, I am going to talk about the basics of using the timeline of Wondershare Filmora 10. The timeline is where the majority of the video editing takes place. I am going to walk you through the timeline panel as well as how to add, adjust, lock, and hide video and audio tracks. Now let's talk about the playhead and time ruler. Playhead is an indicator that shows you where on the timeline you are currently located and allows you to move through the media files you placed on the timeline. The frame at which the playhead is positioned is going to be displayed in the preview window. The time ruler is the area that shows the duration of your project. As you hover your mouse over it, the pointer is going to change in a two-way arrow. Move the mouse either to the left or to the right while holding the left click to zoom in or to zoom out of the timeline. The zoom to fit the timeline icon is located in the upper right corner of the timeline. Clicking on this icon will enable you to see all the media you have added to the timeline. You can also use the zoom slider if you want to adjust the zoom level manually. Now let's talk about the tracks. A track is the part of the timeline where all the media is located. Tracks in Filmora 10 can either hold video or audio files. And you should keep in mind that audio and video clips cannot be on the same track. To create and add a new track, drag and drop audio or video file to a preferred location. Filmora 10 will automatically create a new track for the elements dragged to the timeline. Click the Manage Tracks icon located in the upper left corner of the panel and there is a drop down menu that lets you manage your tracks further. You can click on the toggle track output icon that looks like an eye on a particular track if you want the media to be invisible. The toggle track output option is depicted as the sound icon on audio tracks and it enables you to mute an entire track. The lock icon 
lets you lock all the media on a track. Once you lock a track, you will not be able to edit, move or change the media files. You can organize your timeline by right clicking the media and mark them into different colors. If you would like to add a marker to a video clip, you just have to make sure that the clip is selected and click on the add marker icon. Creating notes can be useful when working on large projects because you can use them to line up different types of media assets. Now let's talk about basic editing. To delete a clip from the timeline, you must first click on it to select it and then either press the delete button on your keyboard or click on the trash can icon in the toolbar. To remove multiple video clips or other pieces of media, press and hold control on your keyboard, then select the target files and delete them. Sometimes removing or deleting the video files using the methods I have mentioned will leave a big gap in the timeline. To avoid the gap, you can use the ripple delete feature. Right click on the clip you need to remove and then select ripple delete to remove that clip and have the remaining media in the track move over to fill the empty space. If you need to trim from the beginning or end of a piece of media, hover your mouse over the left or right edge of the clip until the trim tools trim icon shows up. Then click and drag the edge of your clip forward or backward to trim off the unwanted portion. The split icon that looks like scissors is located in the toolbar above the timeline. It is also available on the playhead as well. Click on it to make the first cut reposition the playhead to the location where the new video should end and make the second cut or right click and choose split. If you need to cut out a section in the middle of a video clip simply split the unwanted section select it and press the delete icon to remove it. Now you have learned the basics of Wondershare Filmora's timeline. Before creating our first project Let's discuss some important settings that you need to configure in Filmora. These are just one-time settings when you do a fresh install of Filmora. Go to File menu and select Preferences. A panel opens up. Here we have five different tabs at the top. In the General section, you can change software interface language, color theme of the software, such as Dark Mode or Light Mode. And you can configure your update frequency of the software. Just select the message center option so that you don't get stuck in the ads. And keep the project library window activated. Now on the folders tab, you can assign different paths to your hard drive and folders for each item. By default, Filmora saves its resources and files in the documents, Wondershare, Wondershare Filmora folder. You can change them accordingly for each item. In the editing tab, you can set Custom durations for each element which you drag and drop onto the project timeline. This does not apply to video and audio files. By default, the photo, effect and freeze frame durations are set to 5 seconds and transition duration is set to 2 seconds. You can change the settings duration by entering a value such as 10.00 which means 10 seconds. But you can also configure it as number of frames instead of seconds and keep the other settings as default. On the Save tab, you can set a timer for automatic backups of your project in minutes. And you can also configure the auto backup location or path where you want it to be saved. By default, it is in the same location in the Documents folder. Keep in mind that the backups are small chunks of multiple project files which are saved in timely basis. Those are not the master project files. If you want to change the default location of your master project file, then you can change it from here. Now in the performance tab, you should enable hardware acceleration options to maintain a smooth editing experience. When you install Filmora first time, you may notice this option of decoding as frozen. That's because your GPU or graphics card is not configured. And in the graphics card selection window, the drop down may not work, but that's okay. In that case, you can click on OK button and close Filmora, restart the machine, relaunch Wondershare Filmora, open up Project Preferences again, and then check this Performance tab. You should be able to select a graphics card from here. 
If it still doesn't work, then you should update your graphics driver from the vendor's website if it's NVIDIA or AMD. And if you have Intel CPU with integrated graphics, then you should go to Windows Update from the control panel and install all the important updates as well as optional updates. By doing this, Microsoft Windows will install a perfect and up-to-date driver for your machine. Then restart the machine after installation and reopen Filmora. Now you should be able to select the graphics card from here. Let's move on to other settings. In the preview render, deactivate the background render option because it will use system resources during editing and will overload the software which might result in a crash. Activate this option to delete render files when project is closed. Otherwise it will save a lot of junk on your hard drive and you will eventually run out of space. Let's talk about proxies. Proxies are the video files which are used to downgrade a video resolution to edit easily. For example, if you are editing a 4K footage and your machine runs slow or cannot handle it efficiently, then you can choose the 4K resolution from here to let Filmora automatically downgrade the footage resolution whenever you import 4K files into the project. This does not affect the original resolution and only applies to the project timeline for editing and does not affect the export resolution of your project as well. So this is temporary. Make sure to select this option to auto delete proxy files when project is closed or it will use a lot of hard drive space for no reason. And lastly, activate this option to play back using latest rendering engine for better performance and click OK to save the settings. Now your Wondershare Filmora is fully configured. You don't have to repeat these steps even if you update Filmora. Now I am going to build a project in Filmora and will explain how to organize the media files. Almost everyone uses the simple method of importing media files into Filmora by clicking on this media panel and selecting the files. But that's not a good way to start a project. In order to stay organized, you should make a routine of the following steps. Here at the left sidebar, click on project media. Under that, you will see a new folder. Now let's say I have footages from two different cameras if my shoot was multicam. Then right click on this folder and rename it to cam1. Next, in the bottom left corner, click on this plus icon to create a new folder and then rename it to cam2. If you have recorded audio separately, then you can create another folder and rename it to audio or if you want to record voiceover during the editing process, you can rename it to VO or voiceover. You can create as many folders as you want for each media type. Now let's import the media files. Click on cam1 folder to select it and then click on the media panel to open up the media browser. Or you can also click on import drop down menu and select import media files. Now select all the footages of camera 1 at once and click on open. Next, select the cam2 folder and import the footages similarly. And the same with the audio folder to import any voiceovers, music tracks, etc. Now all of your media is organized. When you click on project media, you can see all mixed files. But if you select a specific folder, you can find the related media in it. Now let's configure the project. There are two ways to configure a project. You can either go to file and select project settings or under the preview window, click on this LCD icon and select change project aspect ratio. It will open up the project settings panel. From here, if you are creating content for YouTube, then select 16 into 9 aspect ratio to maintain a landscape format of the video or select 9 into 16 if you want to edit a portrait video. If you want it more wider, then select cinema profile from the drop-down. Other aspect ratios are self-explanatory. From resolution drop-down, select the resolution of your footage which you will be exporting. For example, if my raw footage is in 4K, but I want to export my final edit in 1080p or Full HD, then I'll select 1920 by 1080 from here. You can also configure a manual resolution in these boxes. Left box is the width and right box is the height. But if you want to maintain a specific aspect ratio such as 16 into 9 for YouTube, since I have already selected above, then click on this lock icon. 
By doing so, when you manually change the resolution in one of those boxes, Filmora will automatically adjust the other value to maintain the same aspect ratio. And lastly, the frame rate. This is where most people struggle. If you choose a wrong frame rate here, your exported video won't be smooth. If you have mixed footages with different frame rates, you should select the lowest frame rate from here. Let me clarify. For example, here are my videos which I am going to edit. I shot different videos. One of them is 25 FPS and others are mixed with 30 and 60 FPS. I can right click on each video, go to properties, select the details tab at the top and here I can see the frame rate. In this case, it's 25 FPS as I already know that the lowest frame rate I shot at was 25. So this one is going to be the main frame rate of my sequence or final video. If I choose a frame rate higher than this, then the video won't be smooth and there will be jitter or stuck frames in it. Because Filmora will fill those empty spaces with blank frames. The other two videos have higher frame rates than this one, so it won't be an issue for those. Since they have extra frames per second and Filmora will shrink them down to match the actual sequence when exporting the video. But I can also slow down the 60fps video a little bit if I want during editing. So for the project settings, I'll select 25fps from the drop down. And this will be my final frame rate and resolution of exported video after editing. The next step is to save your project. Because if Filmora crashes anytime, you should have at least the project saved on your hard drive. To save the project, go to File and select Save Project. Choose a location, rename the project file, and then save it. Now, when working on your project, you should press Ctrl S to keep saving your project momentarily after every two minutes. When you are done with your editing and want to export the video, simply click on this export button. The export panel will open up. By default, all these settings will be the same which we configured in the project settings earlier, but still there are few settings which you need to configure here. From the left side, you can select the video format. MP4 is the most commonly used on YouTube and social media platforms, and it is also the most compressed format, which means your files won't be encoded into a big size. If you want lossless format, then select MOV from here, but only select it if you want to export short videos for social media such as Facebook and Instagram. As those platforms apply a lot of compression on media files. YouTube also applies compression on your uploaded videos, but not that much as compared to other social platforms. So MP4 is a great choice for YouTube. Now here's the important part. After selecting any of the format, click on the settings button. Here, you should change the bitrate value and the audio settings. For YouTube, if you want the best quality, choose the highest bitrate possible. But the higher the bitrate, the larger the file size will be and your computer will also take a lot of time in exporting the video. I would suggest you to choose a bitrate of 30,000 if the video is full HD. But it also depends on the quality of your original raw footage. If you go to properties on your original footage, and in the details tab, you can see the total bitrate. You should not go higher than that if you really want to export at a highest bitrate. YouTube has also listed its bitrate guide for different frame rates and resolutions. These are in Mbps and in Filmora, it is listed as Kbps. So a 30,000 Kbps bitrate would be almost equal to 30 Mbps bitrate. As for the YouTube's listed bitrates, you should always add 5 to 10 Mbps more to it. To get the best result. Again, it also depends on your original raw footage as well. If your raw footage bitrate is let's say 6800 kbps and you are exporting it at 25 mbps or 30,000 bitrate, then you should expect some loss in quality after uploading on YouTube or other platforms. But you can still export it at a higher bitrate, no issues at all. But Filmora will transform it into a variable bitrate to render your video at the best possible quality it can produce, depending on the quality of the original footage. Now the next step is to configure audio settings. Simply select the sample rate of 48000 from here and select the audio bitrate of 320 kbps to get a good quality audio. Now click on OK and assign a name to your final video. And select a path on where you want to export it on your computer. Make sure that the GPU acceleration is already active 
and click on export button. Once done, it will show you a message as converted successfully. Click on the find target button to open that folder containing your video. Now let me quickly show you some sources of free stock photos, videos and music. First one is pexels.com. It offers 100% free stock photos and videos in high quality. Simply search for anything it will return with bunch of assets. Click on any one of them and over here under free download, choose a resolution or quality you want and click on free download button. By default, it opens up photos, but you can also select videos from here. Select any video, click on the drop down, choose a resolution and download it. If you want a specific aspect ratio, then on the search results page, you can click on the orientation and select any of these options. It will only display that specific aspect ratio footage. Or if you only want a specific resolution, click on size and choose the desired resolution to filter the search results. Pexels is 100% free and you don't need to credit the author. The second website is Pixabay. It is same as Pexels, but you can have some more options to look at. Type the keyword in the search bar and click on the drop down icon on the right. You can download photos, vectors, illustrations, videos, music and sound effects. And there are some more options on the search results page. For copyright free music, the first one is YouTube's audio library. Simply go to Google and type YouTube audio library. Open this link. And from there, you can download any music that you want to use without any author credits. The second one is Pixabay Music. Go to Google and type Pixabay Music. Open the link and download any music you want. You can also filter the results from the left sidebar. Let's go through the items in video editing panel. There are two ways to open up the video editing panel. One is by double clicking on any of your footage. And second is by selecting your footage and clicking on the edit button from here. Be advised that the editing panel works with a single or individual item, which is in the project timeline. If you have chopped your footage into different parts, then you will be able to make changes in the editing panel for each single part of your footage one by one. You cannot perform group editing. Now in the editing panel, there are eight different controllers. The check mark indicates that this controller is currently active on your video. Click the arrow behind any controller and it will open up its controls. In the transform, you can rotate your video to any angle, can flip horizontally or vertically, scale down or scale up its size, and can change position of your shot horizontally or vertically. In compositing, there are several blending modes which you will learn in the next video. In motion tracking, you can track a specific object in your shot and can assign an other element or item to it to move with the motion tracked object. It can be anything like a video, picture, text, etc. Once you activate this controller, you will notice a box in the preview window. It is used to select an object in the shot. For example, I have a text layer on my timeline. It is just a simple text with no motion, but I want it to move with the bicycle in this shot. So I'll just pick a place which I want tracked as a moving object. Let's say this one. I can drag the box and then resize it because it will track the object which is inside the box. So make sure to resize it in order to perfectly track. Now my playhead is at the start of the clip, but if you want the motion tracking from a specific time frame in your video, then simply drag the playhead to that time code and then you can place the box at the object. Once done, simply click on the start tracking button. Sometimes it doesn't track perfectly, but you can edit it easily. Here on the video in the timeline, you can see this colored line above it. This means that the motion tracking has been processed for this clip. Now place your playhead where the tracking was not perfect. Like this, from this frame, the box moved away. So I'll just readjust the box here and then click again on the motion tracking button. For some shots, it does a perfect job, but you can always edit it easily multiple times until it's perfect. Simply place your playhead where it lost the tracking, readjust the box and track again. Now you can see some keyframes as dots. 
which means that I made some adjustments in the motion tracking path. Now once done, select the object from this drop down which you want to assign with the motion tracking. In my case, I want the text to be linked. So when I click on the drop down, I can see the text box there. That's because the text is already placed above my footage in the timeline. That's why it is showing it here. If that object is not placed on your timeline above the footage, you cannot link it. Now once linked, you can see the chain icon being displayed on the element. Now obviously, you have to change the position of your object. For example, I want my text to stay here. Now it will stick to that point. If you want to reset this controller, simply click here and it will reset all the tracking data on that footage. Next we have stabilization. Stabilization does not work if you have applied motion tracking on a video. If you deactivate motion tracking, then you can use stabilization. Stabilization is used to digitally stabilize your shot. For example, in this clip, there is some camera shake, but I can reduce it by activating stabilization. It will start analyzing the shot. When it's 100% done, you can then select a smooth level of how much stabilization do you want. But the more you apply, the more your shot will get zoomed in because the way it works is that it zooms in the shot and then balance the shot so that it doesn't get cut from the edges or corners. For example, from edge processing, if I select none, you can see that the top edge of this footage is blank. You can fill that gap by selecting tile, which will repeat the short frame. You can select extend, which will drag the pixels from the edge to fill the gap. Or you can select reflect, which is by far the best option which mirrors the short edges. The chroma key is used to remove a specific color for your shot. For example, green screen or blue screen background. Here I have a green screen shot. I can place it on track 2 and can put a picture of a background underneath it in track 1. So when I double click on the top green screen footage and activate chroma key, it will automatically remove the green screen from the shot and I can see the new background. But you can use this eyedropper tool to pick the color more accurately. It will show you the pixel in magnified view so that you know which color you are picking. And you can make further adjustments from the controllers here to perfectly clean the green screen. If you are not sure that your green screen is perfectly removed, you can always click on the alpha channel option to see it more clearly. This helps by inversing the colors and displaying the objects in white color. It means that whatever is in white color, it is not affected by the removal. So in this case, this tool has worked perfectly. So you can use this alpha channel when you are not sure if the tool worked perfectly and then you can make changes to the values and can adjust to make it more clean. Next, we have lens correction. As the name suggests, it corrects the distortions which are produced by different lenses. If it was shot on a wide angle lens or GoPro, Sony, etc., just select the closest profile and use the adjust level slider to align the shot. Next is drop shadow. You can use it for pictures or anything which is used as an overlay on the video. For example, I want to show a screenshot here and it doesn't look good due to some reason. Because it gets merged with the video and I don't see it clearly. I can use the drop shadow to separate it from the video. And further, I can adjust the shadow distance, smoothness, opacity and the color of shadow as well as the shadow direction. And lastly, auto enhance. It basically adds some contrast and sharpness to the video if you don't want to manually adjust those values and simply drag the slider to adjust where you want. Let's discuss the blending modes. What are blending modes? It is basically an art of adding two or more clips in a single frame. It allows the clips and their pixels to merge in each other. Different ways of combining pixels are called modes and for that reason the properties of a linear burn mode is not the same as the properties of the multiply blending mode. Each mode you select brings preset, image transparency, as well as brightness. Which mode you will use depends mostly on the context and the images you want to use in your video. The normal mode is a part of the standard set of blending modes in almost all photo and video editing programs. 
it enables you to keep the top layer intact by preventing the pixels from two images to merge. It is a perfect picture in picture blending mode since it allows you to keep two overlaying images separate and have two different narratives within the same shot. The screen mode is best used when you are working with dark monochrome backgrounds because it reduces the dark areas in the video thus enabling you to blend the top layer into the background seamlessly. Therefore, the video clips you want to overlay and blend with each other must be recorded perfectly in order to get the best results. Filmora features a number of different blending modes so figuring out what each mode can do may take some time and practice. Let's have a look at how to use blending modes. Drag the video clip you would like to use as a background onto the project timeline and then drag and drop the video or a photo to a timeline above the one on which the background clip is located. Adjust the duration of video clips or photos you have placed on the timeline and use the preview window to determine whether or not you should readjust the size and position of the overlaying image. Double click on the top object. In the compositing section open the blending mode drop down and select one of the modes. Changing the opacity value will enable you to reduce the transparency level of a layer. While you can also open up the transform section and it will help you find the perfect position on the background for the overlaying image. Overlaying two video clips and blending them to each other can be an effective way to make your videos look more creative and more professional by adding logos and all other information you would like the potential viewers of your videos to see. The blending modes Filmora offers can help you achieve the visual style you want to get in your videos but it may take you some time to learn when is the best time to use a certain mode. Now let's talk about the features such as crop, pan, zoom in and zoom out. Before doing that let me give you a simple tip. When adding different videos into your project, sometimes one of those videos don't match up when it comes to resolution. For example if your project is 1080p which is 1920 by 1080 and you drag and drop a video on your project timeline during editing process which is in 720p. 2K or 4K resolution, you will then end up with an unframed video. In order to fit that video in your 1080p project resolution, just right click on it in the project timeline and select crop to fit. Filmora will automatically adjust the frame size of that video for you. But you can have more control of the frame size of that video as well. That's where the crop and zoom feature comes handy. In the project timeline, right click on a video and select crop and zoom. A new panel opens up. From here, you can drag the box from the corner to adjust its size. As well as you can move it around to set anywhere you want. Anything which is displayed inside this box will be displayed in your project video. This means that the video will be cropped. So you can see the cropped resolution down here as well. To make it even easier for you, Filmora has included select aspect ratio drop down here as well. Choose any aspect ratio and then resize the frame. It will keep that aspect ratio locked so that you don't mess up with the frame. But you can also select custom from here and can resize the box freely. So this is how you can crop a video. You can also animate the cropping of your video such as zooming in and zooming out. Select the pan and zoom tab from the top. Here you will see two boxes. One is start which means that from where do you want the cropping to start. And the second one is for ending frame. Just single click on the boxes one by one and adjust accordingly. By default, the start box is selected, I can drag it anywhere I want like we did in the previous tab, but most of the time you want to keep it at the full frame. Now click on the end box, resize it and place where you want the animation or zoom in to end. But there are some more controls for ease of use. If you want to swap the start and end boxes, simply click here. Or I can animate it from right to left, it will adjust both boxes in the middle. Same with the left to right, near to far or far to near to change positions of both boxes. Click OK and play the video. Now it looks good but it does not stop at a specific point. For that purpose you'll have to use keyframes which are reliable and easier to use. I'll explain the keyframing tool in an upcoming lesson. So this is how the crop and pan tool works. Let's talk about the transitions. Transitions are used to animate the video to change a scene. Let me show you how these can be used in different ways. You can go to the transitions tab from the top. There you will find all the transition presets which Filmora provides. 
by default you will have to download them like this by double clicking on a transition sometimes it keeps loading but doesn't download but that's the issue with their website from where it pulls the data keep trying until the arrow disappears from that transition image all of your downloaded transitions can be found in the downloads tab in order to use a transition simply drag and drop it between two videos to form a joint you can also increase or decrease the duration of a transition by dragging it from left or right edge but you can also right click on it to open its properties you can assign a specific duration to it and if you have multiple transitions in your project timeline you can click on apply to all button to apply the same duration to all of the transitions you can also select different modes such as applying a transition between the two clips or use prefix which will move the transition to the end of the previous clip or postfix to move the transition to the start of the next clip transitions can be dragged and placed on either side of the video clip as well it's a great way to avoid hard cuts when a footage switches to the next one as transitions make it smoother let's discuss split screens in order to use a split screen simply click on the split screen tab at the top there are multiple layouts which are self defined choose any style based on the number of videos that you need in a single split screen for example i want this one in which i can add three videos drag and drop it into the project timeline click on the preview render button to render this part of the timeline so that we get a smooth playback now let's play it to see its animation this is how your split screen animations will be at the start and end of the clip but you can also disable those animations easily if you want so that the videos start with the split screens already in the frame double click on it its controller will open up and at the left corner you will notice this enable split screen animation you can uncheck this to disable the animation now let's place some videos inside these screens click on the advanced button the editor window opens up at the left side if you already have some media in your project then it will show up here so that you can easily drag and drop into the split screens you can also import anything from here too in its preview window there are three split screens you can single click on any one of them and can edit their values those are related to these tabs to have more customization options and below the preview window is the small timeline which contains the videos of each split screen now let's import some videos here drag each video into their respective track based on where you want it to reside you can also zoom out and zoom in in the timeline by using this slider you can trim the footages here as well by dragging their edges from both hands keep this option selected to resize the split screen track on the main timeline to match the actual duration of the footages inside it you can also select each video from this small timeline and can switch between these tabs at the top to adjust anything you want such as editing panel values audio settings color correction as well as animation style in the animation there are some presets which you can just click on any one of them and it will get applied to the selected footage at its both ends or you can customize further by creating keyframes after you are done with the changes just hit okay and your split screen video is ready you can now treat it as a single video clip place it anywhere you want in your project and can right click on it to have more options like a normal video just make sure you press the render preview button before playing it to make the playback bit smoother keyframe animation works by creating two or more points in time and by specifying some variable effects such as rotation scale position or opacity of an object video clip picture or any piece of visual media people use them for many purposes such as creating intros with animated logos creating effects with transparency and creating custom paths of a media to move or change its behavior for example if i want to animate an object like this and i want it to move from a 30 second time frame to a 1 minute time frame to travel to the other corner of the screen i can double click on it and then click on animation tab at the top move and place the playhead at the 30 second time code from where i want the animation to start and then click on the add button it will add an empty keyframe at the point which is displayed as a dot on the media then i can move and place the playhead to 1 minute time code where i want to finish the animation now i just need to specify some values 
In this case, as I want it to travel to the other corner, so I'll simply change the X and Y position values by dragging left or right on their respective boxes. Or I can also drag and move the object itself in the preview window. This will add another keyframe to that point in the timeline with the final values. Now when I play the video, the object will travel for 30 seconds from one corner to another. I can also add multiple keyframes within these two keyframes. Let's say at 45 seconds time code, I first want the object to travel here and then continue its journey to the other corner. Then I'll simply place the playhead at the time code, drag the object in the preview window and place there. Now when I play the video, it will behave exactly as I wanted it to. You can animate it in many ways and each keyframe can hold multiple effects or values. For example, I want to remove the center keyframe, so I'll just single click on it to select it and then press the delete button on the keyboard to remove it. Now the object will revert back to its original animated path which I configured at the first place. But I still want to adjust the values of the ending keyframe, so I'll just place my playhead on that keyframe and then change the scale value and opacity value and lastly adjust its position since I scaled it up. You can use these keyframes on any media clip or picture and you can also utilize them on multiple tracks in the timeline to animate multiple different objects in the video. If you want to remove or change the background of a video, then you can easily do it with the help of Filmora's human segmentation effect. It's a paid add-on as AI portraits by Wondershare, but it works extremely well. Simply bring your footage into the project timeline. Then go to Effects tab and select AI portrait from the left sidebar. Drag and drop the human segmentation effect onto the footage and there you go. Now the background is black, that's because there is nothing behind that person. So you can easily place an image or a video as a background. Simply move the clip onto the track 2 and place any media underneath it. This is how you can change the background. But sometimes there will be some minor imperfections which you can easily adjust by double clicking on the footage above and from the editing panel go to video effects. Now I can use these sliders to adjust the edge thickness around the subject as well as use the feather slider to smoothen the edges. So this is how you can remove background from any video. In Filmora, there are lots of blur options to choose from. Simply go to effects tab and in the recommended tab, type blur in the search bar and press enter. There are some more blur options which I'll discuss shortly. Let's go through the ones which you will be using mostly. The simple blur effect is basically a motion blur which keeps shaking the image. Now for example, if I have a video which is in portrait mode and I want to upload it on YouTube, but when I upload it on YouTube, it shows black bars around the video. So in order to remove those black bars and fill the frame, I can use the basic blur effect in Filmora to remove those. Here's how to do it. Simply create a project of 1920 by 1080 and match the frame rate with the original portrait video. Put it here and create the project. Now import that footage from the media panel. Filmora will ask you to choose the project resolution or the video resolution. Simply click on the keep project settings. Now here I can see the black bars around the video. Simply go to effects, type basic blur in the search bar and hit enter. Drag and place it above the footage in track 2. And there you go, your YouTube video is ready without black bars. You can also change some settings. Double click on the blur layer. You will get blur controls in the editing panel. You can change the blur color. Adjust the width of the blur. Change the luminance of the blurred background. Adjust the feather value to specify the blur intensity and change the alpha value to choose opacity. Now let's say you want to hide someone's face in a video or picture or hide some sensitive information. Then you can go to effects tab and type mosaic in the search bar and press enter. Drag and place it on top of your video in a separate track. You can also drop it into the footage. You can also drop it onto the footage as well, but that's not good since you may end up disturbing the footage. Now double click on the mosaic and adjust its size by dragging the corners in the preview window and place it on the subject. Change its style type from the editing panel. Choose a specific blur amount and adjust the opacity according to your needs. 
Now let's say that you want to hide face of a person who is actually moving in the video. That means you need the blur to move with the subject as well. Then you can double click on the footage, activate motion tracking from the editing panel, place the box at the face of the subject and track it. Once done, bring your playhead to the point from where you want the blur to start hiding the face. Now drag the mosaic and place it on the subject's face in the preview window. Select the footage below and in motion tracking choose this mosaic effect to link it to the video and there you go. You have successfully hidden the face of a person. Now there are some more uses of blur. Let's say in this shot you want to blur the background but not the person. Then there are two ways to do it. First one is to go to effects tab and type tilt shift in the search bar and press enter. There you will find two effects, tilt shift circle and tilt shift linear. Circle means circular blur and linear means rectangular blur. Drag and drop the tilt shift circle onto the video. Then double click on the footage from the editing panel, go to video effects at the end. Adjust the size of the circle, drag and place it anywhere in the footage. In this case, let's place it on the face of this person because we don't want the face to be blurred. Now change its intensity value to adjust the blur ratio. This is how you can blur out the background. You can also use the tilt shift linear if the subject is not round and you want rectangular type blur. Both work the same way, the difference is only the shapes. Now the second method is to use the add-on of Filmora which is AI portrait to apply blur on the background with a moving subject in the foreground. First, copy that video and place it on track 2 as well. Now go to effects, then select AI portrait from the left sidebar. Drag and drop the human segmentation onto the footage which is on track 2. Now in the effects tab, click on the recommended from the left sidebar and type blur and hit enter. Drag and drop the scale blur onto the footage in track 1. Double click on the footage and adjust the blur intensity from the video effects. Or search for mosaic in the search bar and drag and drop the mosaic full effect onto the footage in track 1. Adjust its values similarly from the video effects in the editing panel. So this is how you can use different blur types in your videos. Let's go through the Filmora's built-in webcam and screen recording tool. In order to record something, there is a drop down above the media panel which says record. When clicked, a drop down opens up with further option to record video from a webcam or record the computer screen or record an audio voiceover. In this video, we'll discuss the top two options. Let's click on the record from webcam option. This opens up the capture video panel. Here you can see your live video from the webcam in the preview window. If you have multiple cameras, then you can select a specific one from the video device drop down. Same applies to the microphone. Then select the video resolution. It is always best to choose the highest resolution possible. And lastly, select a frame rate. Most of the time, only 30 FPS is supported by the webcams and it is fine enough to record a good video. Once you are ready, simply click on the red recording button and it will show a 3 seconds timer in the preview window. And once the timer ends, it will start recording the video and you can see the current recording time here. Once you are done with the recording, simply click again on the red icon to stop it and then press OK. Filmora will automatically import the video into the media panel. Now you can use it in your project, but if you want to know the location of this file, then right click on the video and select Reveal in Explorer. And there you go. You can now copy this file to another location. Now let's go through the screen recording tool. Click again on the record drop down and select record PC screen. After few seconds, Filmora will get minimized in the taskbar and the screen recorder window will open up. Here it will show you the current resolution of the screen. You can adjust the screen size from the drop down. By default it is selected as full screen. But if you want more flexibility then select custom. Now drag the corners to choose a specific area to record. Click and drag from the center to change its position. You can also record a specific program or window. For example I have a folder opened here. Now if I select target window from the drop down I can hover my mouse anywhere on the program and it will show the active area which will be recorded in the red box. 
You can also mute your system sounds and microphone by clicking on these two icons. These bars in them represent the sound. When you speak into the microphone, this will show colored levels of your audio. If you have multiple monitors and want to record the screen of a specific one, then you can click here on the monitors icon to select it. The red button represents the recording button. You can press it when you are ready for recording. In order to adjust some more settings about your recording quality, simply click on this arrow icon before settings. Here you can choose a location of where you want the recording file to be saved. You can select a frame rate. Normally a 30 FPS frame rate is sufficient. In the quality drop down, select the best quality as it will increase the overall bitrate of your video. You can also activate a timer if you want the recording to stop after a certain time frame. If you are demonstrating something on your screen and want to show your mouse clicks in the video, then activate this option and choose a color. Whenever you press the mouse button during recording, it will animate it with a circle. If you also want a sound effect on each click, you can activate it as well. If you want easy controls over your recording, I would suggest you to set up some short keys. For example, if I want to pause the recording and then resume it after few seconds or minutes, I can press F10 on my keyboard by default. It will just pause the recording or I can press F9 to stop the recording and save the final video file. But I can click in each of these boxes and then press any keys on the keyboard to set up my own hard keys. Simply click on the box and press that key. And lastly, if you want to record your screen and camera footage as a picture in picture profile, then you can activate this option as well. It will pop up the live camera feed and you can drag and place it anywhere on the screen. You can also resize it by dragging the corners. You can still change its position and size during the recording as well. When you are done with the video, press the hard key and Filmora will automatically import the video into the media panel. From there you can use it in your project or can copy the file to another location to edit later. So this is how you can easily record videos using Filmora 10. Let's talk about the masks. Masks are used to display a specific part of the video in the screen while removing its remaining part to merge it within the video. There are two types of masks which are available in Filmora. Now there are multiple uses of masks. It is up to creativity of the user as how to creatively use these masks in the project. Let's go through some examples. I have a video in the timeline. Let's say I want to merge this video with another one. So I'll just move it above onto the track 2 and will place another video underneath it. Then go to effects tab and in the search bar type mask. Here I have two different masks. One is image mask and other one is shape mask. Let's drag and drop the image mask onto the top footage which is on track 2. As you can see, the top video is being displayed in a circle and all other media is removed and I can see the background video which is underneath it. Now double click on the top footage. In the editing panel, let's go to the video effects. Here I have the mask settings. In the preset mask box, I have some shape presets which I can apply to this mask. The current mask is the circular mask which is selected here. When I select any other shape from here, it changes the shape of the top video in the preview window as well. Below it, there are some more controls. I can change the mask position in X and Y axis. I can increase or decrease its width and height. And can also apply feather to smoothen the mask from the edges. I also have the option to invert the mask as well. But let's say if you don't like any shape from these presets, then you can use your own custom shape image by clicking here. It will import the image and it will act like a shape mask. Make sure that the image must have some transparency area where the video can be displayed. Let me show you an example of that as well. I have opened up Photoshop. I'll just create an image which matches the video resolution on my timeline. Now I'll take a rectangle tool and will draw it on the full canvas to hide all of it. Next I'll rasterize this layer so that I can cut it in a custom shape. Now I'll just take the lasso tool and draw a random shape. And then press the delete button to delete that part from the image. Now this part in the center is transparent which means that my video can be seen inside it. Let's save it as a PNG image file because if I save it as a JPG file or JPEG file it won't be transparent.
Now import it into the preset mask. Then scroll down to the bottom and here is our custom shape mask. Double click on it to apply and now you can adjust all the values to change its position, inversing, width etc. The second mask type is the shape mask. You cannot change its shape, it's a fixed mask but you can control its width and height. Double click and go to video effects. Here are the controls for it. Adjust the width, height and position values as well as feather and inverse if you want. Now keep in mind that when I change the position values of both of these masks, it changes the position of the mask itself, not the video inside it. So if you want to change the video position as well, then you can change it from the transform controls. Or if you want to animate the video position, you can go to animation and then create keyframes for its position. There is another technique to mask the media without using masks. Let's go through the example. I have two videos on the timeline. I want to mask the top footage. Right click on it and select crop and zoom. Select custom from the ratio drop down. Now crop the area which you want to remove from the frame. Now click OK. It will center the frame. But I can drag it. It will auto snap in the frame perfectly by dragging it. And there you go. Let's discuss about the typography in Filmora. Writing text in Filmora is very easy for any kind of video or scenario. Filmora already has a huge library of text presets. Simply click on the Titles tab from the top and choose the related category from the left sidebar. You can select Basic, Titles, Openers, Subtitles, Lower Thirds, Callouts, End Credits and much more. For example, let's select Basic and I want to use Title 6. Simply drag and drop it onto the project timeline above your video track. Double click on it to open its editing panel. There are some presets at the left side for the type of style you want in your text. By default, style 1 is selected. By double clicking on any of the defined styles, you can see the results in the preview window. As this text is divided into different parts, that is why it has applied the effect on the one which was already selected. You can select the other parts and can apply different styles to mix them. The bar at the top is a graphic element. You can resize it from the transform section, can change its position, etc. Here on the right side of the text controls, you can select a custom font for each of the text parts, change its style, change its size, styling and alignment, and change the text itself from the text box. In the settings panel, you can change the color of the selected text. If you don't see a suitable color here, then click on more button to see full color palette. Choose any color from the basic colors panel or pick a color from your screen with the help of the eyedropper tool. If you know colors better, then create your own color from the hex HTML value or RGB values and then click on add to custom colors to save it as a preset. You can also apply some spacing between the letters as well as the lines. Can use the controls for alignment. And if you don't want to select the text layers manually, then you can click here to select any layer. You also have the transform controls and compositing controls for the text. Play around with them to make your own style. Using built-in text presets are a great way to save time and get the job done. But Filmora also provides the features to create your own custom text elements and save them as presets to be used in any project. In order to create a custom text, you first need a text layer. Simply go to Titles tab and from Basic, grab any title and drop it into the project timeline. Now double click on it to start editing and then click on Advanced button. Now in this advanced text editing panel, we can fully customize the existing text or can create our own. In this short timeline, we have different text layers and one animation video file. If you don't want the existing text layers and elements, then simply select them one by one in this short timeline and press the delete button on your keyboard to remove it. For example, I want this animated bar to stay here so I am not going to remove it 
and I will create my own text title above it. The elements in this timeline work from down to up. Anything which is on top track will be superior than the one below it. Now on the left side we have styling tools and in the top toolbar we have different elements just like our processor. Let's click on the shape button to choose a shape for the text box as its background. It will link text with its shape so that you don't end up having text outside the shape. You can type the text in the input text field at the left. Change the font type, size, styling, alignment and letter and line spacing from the top toolbar. If you want to customize the text further, then from the text fill options, select a type such as text fill, which will be a single color you can change from here. Or select gradient fill, which will give you two boxes of colors to choose two colors. Or select an image fill if you want a specific image to be displayed in text. You can also use predefined text style presets from here, but still you have all the tools below it to customize your text. Such as text border, activate it, select a color, it will form an outline around the text similar to stroke. Change its opacity, change blur ratio which is basically the smoothness and the size of the border. Next we have text shadow, choose any angle of the text shadow from the type box. Then adjust further values. Next we have shape fill, it is for the box in which the text is written. Select a specific color or choose the style as gradient fill and then choose two different colors. Adjust the opacity as well as angle of the gradient fill. Next you have border of the shape to create an outline around it. You also have an option to import an image such as your logo into this short timeline from the top toolbar. Then resize it and change its position. If you want more text then you can add it by clicking here on the add text box option which will be simple text without background. Now let's animate these elements. First select the logo and then click on animation tab from the top left corner. Choose any animation preset, try them all one by one by double clicking on them. It will show you the preview in the preview window. For example I want this one. Now when I double clicked it created the animation start and end points. These are for adjusting the duration of the animation. Similarly you can apply to any layer in this timeline. It's up to your creativity as how you will use all these tools to create your own design for text titles, lower thirds, etc. All the tools are here to help you out. Now once you are done, click on save as custom button to save it as a text preset. Put a name for it and click OK and OK again. It will be saved as text preset in the titles tab and in the custom folder from the left sidebar. You can drag and drop it anywhere in any project and then double click on it to change the text. So this is how you can create custom text with your own branding in Filmora. Recording a voiceover in Filmora is easy. You can simply go to the top media bar and under record drop down select record voiceover. You can also do this from the right side under the preview window. Click on this microphone icon. This opens up the recording panel. Select your microphone from the device drop down. Next, you should always select this option to mute your project. This means that when you are recording and this option is not active, you will hear all the sounds of your project which are already in it. So make sure to mute your project before recording audio. Then click on this red button to record. It will start recording audio and will be saving the file in real time as you can see in the track below. Click on the red button again to finish the recording and here is your file. It also saves the file into Filmora's default directory from which it imports here as you can see it in the media panel. If you want this file to use anywhere else then simply right click on it to reveal in explorer and copy it from there. This is how you can record your voiceovers in Filmora 10. I will show you how to remove background noise from a video. In most cases 
Recording high quality audio during filming indoors can be difficult if there are background sounds from the environment, for instance, an air conditioner or a fan. Here's how to remove these unwanted noises in Filmora. First, import your video by dragging and dropping it into the timeline panel. Preview and trim the video and delete the parts that you don't want to keep. There are two ways to edit the audio in Filmora. If you want to edit it independently, you can detach it from the video. Simply right click on the video and select detach audio. Now double click on the audio track and editing panel will open up. Select the remove background noise option to remove the background noise directly. Or if you don't want to detach the audio, then double click on the video clip in the timeline to enter the editing panel and switch to audio tab from the top to edit the audio and remove background noise. There are three denoise levels, weak, mid and strong, which determine the strength of how the noise is going to be reduced. Let's see how the weak one sounds. The Wondershare Filmora's background noise removal tool gets the job done. As you can hear, the background noise is still there. Let's go with the mid this time. The Wondershare Filmora's background noise removal tool gets the job done. The background noise is gone, but the person sounds a bit metallic or robotic. To fix this, let's fine tune the audio with the equalizer feature to make the audio sound more natural. Click Customize. Here we bring into the equalizer and right now all the dots are on the zero line which have just been turned down when we checked the remove background noise box. Understanding the audio equalizer is a straightforward process. The low tunes are on the left, the high pitched tunes are on the right. Background noises like wind or traffic are often low tune noises and we want to bring some of that back along with the mid tunes to make the person sound more natural. Let's drag the middle ones up and see how it sounds. Make sure to create a nice curve to make things more gradual. And with some trials and errors, we get our final result. The Wondershare Filmora's background noise removal tool gets the job done. To go one step further, you can add a piece of music to make the audio sound more natural. To do that, you can either import your own music track or click on audio at the top to use a music track from Filmora's audio library. Select any of them and drag and drop it below your audio track. Now if we play it right away, it would be too loud to hear the person speak. To adjust it, double click on the music track to enter the audio editing panel and lower the volume by dragging the slider down on the left. It also shows the current volume level value as well. Let's check out how it sounds. The Wondershare Filmora's background noise removal tool gets the job done. Now it sounds good. That's it. Let's go through some free audio filters which are available in Filmora 10. You can use them to make your videos more engaging and entertaining. In my project timeline, I have a voiceover audio file which I'll be using in this video as an example. This is how it sounds like. So keep watching this video till the end. Now let's apply audio filters or effects on it. Go to effects tab and then select audio effects from the left sidebar. As you can see there are five different audio effects. To apply this effect, simply drag and drop it on any part of your audio file. You can also drag and drop it on your video file if your audio is attached to that video. Now double click on it to open up the audio editing panel. Scroll down and here are the settings for it. You can play around with these values to make it sound like the way you want. So, so keep watching, watching this video, video till the end. end. As the names of these suggest, these are echo sound effects with different pitches. These are almost identical to each other but with minor tweaks. The last one is the phone effect. You can make the voice sound like the person is talking on the phone from the other side. So keep watching this video till the end. But for this phone effect, you cannot change any values of it from the audio editing panel because it's a fixed one. 